What happens when moms connect and share resources? Great things, of course. And today's episode is evidence of just that. This is Motherhood Unmasked, the podcast for real talk about the challenges moms face. I'm your host, Vanessa Harris. But mama, you're the kind of hero who doesn't need to hide behind a mask. I'm looking forward to connecting with you today. Hey there, Mama Bear, Vanessa here with compassion, candor, and clarity for you, the mom who's tired of pretending motherhood is easy peasy, lemon squeezy. You're my kind of girl, and I'm so glad you're here. So right off the top, I'm giving a Mama Bear mention, a shout out, if you will, to Tara Williams a big fan of the Motherhood Unmasked podcast. Fun fact, Tara and I go way back. We actually train together. So she's not only been practicing a long time, she trains other pediatricians. So needless to say, she takes child welfare seriously. And as a mom herself who gives guidance to her patients, moms, it means a lot when she says the podcast encourages her and that she spreads the word about it. I say all that to say that she contacted me after hearing the last episode focusing on intention because it reminded her of a parenting quiz she took recently and she wanted to share it with me. This is the power of moms in community. Moms helping moms and exchanging resources and a listener offering ideas for show topics. By the way, you can do the same thing. You can send me an email or leave me a voice message and you can find out the deets on all of that at vinelifefaith.com forward slash podcast. I would love to hear what mommy issues are on your mind because like I always say, they do matter. So I took the quiz on effective parenting traits and my results were pretty much what I expected with a couple surprises. Now, what wasn't a surprise, especially if you heard episode 28, is that intentionality is one of my strengths. But I certainly had my fair share of weaknesses. And I thought discussing all the traits between today's episode and the next episode would be sort of fun. Now, here's my disclaimer. I have not read the book the quiz is based on, so this is not a review of the book, and I'm not discussing the traits from the author's perspective. I'm using the traits as jumping off points for conversation between us mamas about how these traits could equip us in meeting our mom goals. But I will include the link to the quiz. Uh, It's done by Focus on the Family. I believe they're the publishers of the book. I'll leave the link on the show page in case you'd like to discover your strengths and weaknesses with regard to these traits. So there are seven traits. And since I already talked about intentionality, I won't beat that dead horse. I'll just refer you to episode 28 for my thoughts on that. In today's episode, we'll tackle three more traits from the quiz and then pick up on the other three next time. Now, according to the quiz, love is as much a strength for me as intentionality. And that did surprise me. Not that I'm surprised I love my children, but based on my childhood, their knowing I love them is an area of insecurity for me. If you've ever heard of Gary Chapman's The Five Love Languages, then you know that you only feel loved when someone demonstrates it in the way you perceive love. So the more kids you have, the more variety in how people feel loved and the harder it is to ensure that you're filling everyone's love tank to the degree they need. So first, let me let us all off the hook. So let me first let us all off the hook. Doing the best we can is all we can do. Now, if you haven't taken the five love languages test, add that to your personal growth to do list. I just totally made that up, but it sounds like a winning concept. Personal growth to do list. Let's add it to that. Anyway, find out how your people feel loved so you can make deposits into their love tank. And hey, find out what your love language is so you can teach them how to love you too. 
And then what? Do the best you can to love them in their language. Because look, my parents didn't speak my love language at all. And I talked about those wounds in my book, Daddy's Girl Forever. But God made sure there were other people in my life who did. And he tops the list, by the way. And with age and perspective, I realized my parents loved me the best they knew how. And that's the grace I pray my kids will extend to me. So, yeah, I was surprised I ranked so high on love. But when I think about it, I've always been intentional. There goes that word again about doing my best to let them know I love them because it's a need I'm sensitive to. Now, respect is another one that I'm actually surprised I ranked as a strength because while I do respect my kids, value as persons with their own thoughts and opinions that I should and do give space to, I don't subscribe to the culture's idea of respecting children as equals in every way because the reality is they're not. Physically, developmentally, socioeconomically, the list goes on and on. They don't share the same ability or responsibility as adults. And that's precisely why equally valuable though they are and most vulnerable in society, just as the elderly, it's because of those reasons that it's incumbent upon you and I as moms to give them the respect they should expect from others. We teach them that. So that looks like explaining the why behind decisions when appropriate. Again, there are times when you don't owe or have time to give an explanation. They just need to do as instructed. But as they get older, they need to know your rationale. It helps them learn to think through the why behind their what's in deciding what matters most to them. Um, Respect also looks like letting them be heard, heard in a way that respects you, but heard nonetheless. They need to know what I'm telling you, that your voice matters. And stating what's on your mind and in your heart respectfully is self-respect. And when you honor yourself, you'll honor others. Now, according to the quiz... (laughs) I score decent when it comes to setting boundaries and not having read the book. I don't know what the author means by it. I don't know his take on it. But when I think of boundaries with regard to parenting, I think twofold. Teaching your child to respect your boundaries and teaching them to create their own. So for me as a woman, period, a simple boundary for me is not letting people who just met me give me a nickname. I know in some circles that's commonplace and people might think that's trivial because that's just so natural to them. But to me, it's actually rude. I mean, when you ask my name and I tell you that's what I want you to call me. And then if you're around me long enough, you'll find out if you can shorten my name or make a cutesy version of it. But that's not a liberty I want you to take right off the bat. But as a mom, boundaries are like the bumpers on the bowling alley lane I mentioned last episode. They are the operating guidelines you give your children that within them you allow them age appropriate autonomy. You know, they can make certain choices within those boundaries. But if they jump those rails, there will be consequences. So there's creating boundaries for them in terms of discipline, but there's also teaching them how to set boundaries in their own relationships. You know, in this COVID season, you hear a lot about maintaining a bubble with people who are managing exposure risk similar to you. So you feel safe when you're hanging out with them. But I've been working that bubble long before COVID for me. It's personal space where I enjoy my own thoughts in peace. And I've taught the people around me, the people in my circle to respect that. And that's major in the times we're living in where it's easy to be accessible to any and everyone 24 seven because people without boundaries will have a terrible time respecting yours since they have no concept of alone time. 
So it's a life skill to teach your children to recognize how others are wired and to respect it. Um, My oldest temperament is heavy on the introvert. So like me, he needs time alone with his thoughts because that's when he recharges. So I had to teach his little sister to honor that and accept it when he says not now, later. But on the flip side, he doesn't get to make later indefinite because he needs to engage with the people he loves and lives with. And I'll tell you what I noticed about these parenting traits, which really, if you think about it, apply to any relationship. I appreciate how they intersect. If you don't put any thought into how you show up as a mom, overwhelm will fill the void left by lack of intention. And that stress makes it hard to love your kids and even harder to set guidelines for interaction. And that brings us to the segment of the show called Homework, the work a woman does to build her home and family. This week's homework is taking the five love languages quiz based on the book by the same name authored by Gary Chapman. My husband and I read the book years ago, either in premarital class or as newlyweds, and it's been a game changer for sure. I will include the link to the love languages quiz in today's show notes at vinelifefaith.com forward slash episode 29. I know I said I'd link to the effective parenting traits quiz today, but I'll put that in next week's show notes. It seems to make more sense to start with identifying love languages, because if you don't even know how your child feels loved, then you're already taking the L, a.k.a. the loss, when it comes to effective parenting. So this week, let's find out the love languages of everyone under your roof. Starting with you, girlfriend, you know, I'm all about securing your airway before you can secure someone else's. And it's hard to give what you don't receive. And everyone needs love. Thanks again, Tara, for the suggestion that kicked off today's conversation. If you have a topic suggestion for the show, let me know by email or voice message at vinelifefaith.com forward slash podcast. Next episode, we'll cover the last three traits. They're my weakest ones, so that should be fun. And I hope today's episode gave you some food for thought. In general, I steer clear of books or programs that say you must parent this way or that, because as I've said before, you are as unique as your child. So there's no one size fits all approach. So I try to present key concepts more like the outline of a picture in a coloring book, letting you color it in based on the colors in your crayon box. So have fun getting to know your people this week. And remember, when it comes to you being the mother of your children, you are the woman for the job. Take care. Motherhood Unmasked is sponsored by Vine Life Faith, where we're breaking negative cycles and building healthy community through connection with Christ. VineLifeFaith.com